Okay, here we go. I've got getting ready to fix the rust here on the passenger side of my 77C10. As you can see, I've already got the the outer fender off. I've got the the wheel well taken off, uh, as well as the door. Uh, I'm going to do just like I did on the driver's side, and I'm going to remove this outer cowl panel because I need to repair the kick panel inside. And as such, I went and removed the blower motor. Uh, assembly and I didn't document all that because it's it's pretty straightforward you don't I don't think anybody needs any uh, instructions on how to remove bolts it's pretty basic uh, and here you can see I'll show you again I did it in one of my last videos but I'll show you again the rust that we're dealing with here inside the truck this is the worst of it right here uh, and it does extend. It's it's kind of got some rot here in the, um, the 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 body seam that the uh, weather stripping uh, seats over. So I'm going to go ahead and repair it all the way back to here. Uh, but my floor's in good shape. I don't have the same rust in the same spots as I did on the driver's side, so it should be a little bit easier. And the one main thing that you need to do at least that I need to do it here on my passenger side, you might need to do it on your truck on the driver's side. Just get in here and you gotta remove the gas tank. You can kinda see it right back in there because I'm gonna be cutting and welding and grinding all in this area and the gas tank is back there and obviously I do not want to start a big fire. Alright, here we are underneath the truck looking at the, uh, at the gas tank here. It needs to come out. I'll show you here, there are four bolts that you need to remove here at the rear support. One up here, two, three, and four. Up here at the, towards the front of the, the forward mount, you got the same four bolts. One here, here, it's kind of right here behind the fuel line, and then the fourth right here. Also, you'll need to disconnect your fuel line. And also, don't forget to do this. This little wire right here is your ground strap for the sending unit. You need to take that bolt out as well. Uh, I got a lot of play here in my wire, so I might be able to drop the tank and disconnect the wire at the sending unit. Uh, but if you don't, you might have to cut this wire. And, uh, oh, let's see. My truck's a step side. You can see up there, there's the filler neck. I'm going to disconnect uh, my fuel hose initially up here because there's a whole bunch of dirt and little rust flakes and all kinds of crud that I don't want to get into the gas tank. So I'm going to leave that hose connected so hopefully it'll prevent some of that stuff from falling into my gas tank. And when I get it dropped out, I'll take off these hoses. But uh, definitely, before you do all this, you know, make sure you don't have too much fuel in your tank. That should be fairly obvious uh, that the tank will be heavier. These are, my truck's a short bed. I'm pretty sure this is a 16 gallon tank. And fuel, gasoline weighs, I believe, six pounds per gallon. So at 10 pounds, that'd be 60. Another six would be 36, so 96 pounds of fuel uh, if the tank was full. Plus, you got the weight of the tank, the weight of the brackets, and all that. Year. Uh, if the tank was full, it'd easily be over 100 pounds. So, I think there should only be about two or three gallons in there, so I shouldn't have too much trouble dropping this out. But just keep that in mind. Uh, if you could siphon the fuel out, or if you planning on doing this project just uh you know run your run and drive your truck till uh you're low on fuel okay i've got the fuel tank uh almost totally disconnected i got the fuel line disconnected i've got three out of the four bolts removed up there i got the fourth one loosened same here on the rear mounts got three out of the four removed the fourth one is just loosened i got my ground strap removed and there's one other thing that i just noticed there is a little uh, clamp that holds the fuel line to the frame. 
you can see this little tab that goes through this hole. This bolt is holding that clamp uh, around this fuel line. So you got to remove this bolt as well. I didn't mention that before because I didn't see it. Uh, so you got to remove this bolt. It's a 5 16 inch bolt, which means a uh, half inch wrench, uh, both top and bottom. So, and, and all the other hardware here, uh, you'll just need a 9 16 inch wrench or socket or a uh, and a uh, half inch wrench and socket. But it's almost totally removed. I got the clamps or the hoses, the fill hose and the vent hose removed. So I just got to remove that one bolt holding this clamp on and then I'll be able to drop my tank. All right, I've got the tank almost completely removed. Just wanted to show you a couple things. Here's that clamp that I just mentioned. This is a factory piece. And uh, some, you know, if your truck, if, if someone's pulled the tank out of your truck already, a lot of times they forget to reattach these. So you just have to look and see. There's this little tab on the bottom that presses through a factory hole. It's just an alignment tab. It doesn't hold it in place. That bolt that I just mentioned holds it in place. Also, this is the sending unit wire, and you can see I've got the tank all the way down on the on the driveway. Uh, on my truck, there was plenty of uh, extra length in the wire to set the tank down so that you can remove it. And uh, just wanted to show you all that real quick. And here it is, totally removed. Uh, I got it all taken out of the truck, and you can see this thing is pretty darn nasty up on top of here. So now would be a good time to service your fuel tank. Uh, put in a new sending unit, uh, clean it up, paint it. You can look inside if it's all nasty inside. Uh, you can order some of that uh, fuel tank restoration kit that comes with the muriatic acid and the sealer and uh, I think there's another component to it. I think it's just a cleaner. Uh, so I'm going to get this uh, we get the fuel drained out of here and uh, get this set aside. And I wanted to mention one last safety measure before you get started with your cutting and, and uh, welding. You can see here the factory hard line, that's a fuel line, goes up to the fuel pump. Uh, I just took, I had this little shorty piece of a uh, rubber fuel line. I ran it over, just ran it down on top of the factory hard line and on the other end I just crammed a, a 3 8 inch bolt into the end of it. Remember, there still is fuel in your line going all the way up to the fuel pump and uh, even up to the carburetor. There's still fuel uh, in the float bowl of the carburetor. So grinding and welding under here, you could start a little fire. Uh, if you're lucky and you don't start a fire, what you don't want is to get a whole bunch of grinding dust falling down into your fuel line. Your fuel filter should catch it, but just put a piece of, uh, just a spare piece of rubber fuel line on there, cap it on one end. You, I just use a bolt here, but it just protects your line and protects you from uh, possibly starting a fire.